Hello. Good morning. And welcome to... to also Driven. <laughs> uh, you join us today uh, with an AMI on the back. Uh, we're in my XC70 and we are taking the AMI up to Liverpool where it is going to get on a boat and go to America, its final destination. So last night we took it out in heavy traffic with very little battery. Yes. Well, first of all, it was really very steamy because an AMI doesn't really have proper uh, demisting functionality. No, it's got a hamster and a candle <laughs> and the hamster blows on the candle somewhere in the back of the dashboard and very mildly tepid air wafts through a little tiny vent, which is nowhere near the same size as the windscreen. No. Uh, consequently, this windscreen steams up quite a lot, so it's not the easiest thing to see out of. So you have to have the side windows open, uh, which when it's you know, like nine degrees and raining is a bit chilly. Mm. The other thing is we can't uh, lean across and actually wipe the windows either. <coughs> no, it's too far away. Yeah, it's 16 feet in front of you. And also the other thing we discovered last night, uh, or remembered, about the AMI is that it has no interior lighting and so when you're kind of get in at night to find, or trying to get out to find the door handles, I can't yeah. see where the door handle is because it's dark. Uh, anyway, but that's not to say we don't love the AMI, so let's, you know, we spent the last video bitching about the uh, Alpine, about how much we don't like it, so. Yeah. Although well, I think it's a little bit different between an 80,000 euro car and an 8,000 euro car. <laughs> that's you true. Know, you can forget yeah. it not having an interior yeah. light. Yeah, and a lot of the people who've got them and use them on a daily basis have retrofitted lights and blinds and that kind of thing to them to make them a little bit more usable. Because yeah. it is very 2CV, it's very 2CV light. Yeah. And, you know, like a 2CV, you don't really have any qualms of getting a couple of like, you know, screws and screwing something to the dashboard because well, you, it's so basic inside. Yeah, it it's is like, a utilitarian vehicle. Yeah, it needs a clock. Go get an alarm clock and like nail it to the dashboard. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah that kind of thing. So, um, anyway, the we thought that we would do a little um, six months of living with the AMI or an AMI in the UK video because we are the only or the first people to have lived with an AMI for six months in the UK. Yep. Uh, because we imported this one from Amsterdam in was it February or March earlier February. this year. So we actually it's been longer than eight than nine months. Uh, longer than six months. It's bought like eight months ish. Anyway, uh, so I think we, we've driven one and used it in the UK longer than anybody else so far. So we thought we'd let you in on a few of its kind of one, I wouldn't like to say quirks and features, but just what life is like with well, the AMI. We, we famously have, when you say quirks and features, we now have to very famously say it's French and it's not on fire. That's true. It's not on fire yet. Let's leave it at the dock mm. uh, in a couple of hours. And as long as it's not on fire in the rear view mirror as we leave Liverpool docks, yes. we'll chalk that one into a great big not on fire French success. Oh, can I do special provision 961? Oh, please. Okay. so. We do have this problem that on the 1st of November, since the uh, car boat that was transporting loads of German cars to America went on fire because an EV exploded, um, they now have brought in this special provision 961 to which we have had to jump through hoops to get this thing on a boat. And I think we've actually had to insure the entire boat to put the army on it. Yep. Um, and now we have a giant sign in the front of the army saying EV, so they get special treatment when they take it to the docks. Yeah, I don't know what they do with special treatment. Like, I think they keep it away from everyone else. It's like, you know, just in case it goes on fire. <laughs> it's like a, like a plague car, basically. Now, before anybody kind of jumps to the conclusion that we're anti EV, we're not, it is literally only applies to secondhand EVs because we cannot guarantee that the battery has not been damaged in some way. Generally, when cars come from manufacturers, they will accept them as you know just a normal vehicle but we've had to that's how we ended up last night driving it with very little battery because we had to have it very specifically between 15 and 25 percent of range um displayed on the on the dashboard so we couldn't leave it on full charge last night or else we wouldn't drive it in circles today to try and get the battery to reduce but anyway that's special provision 961 which has been the bane of my life for the last <laughs> couple of weeks Thankfully, I wasn't involved in uh, the administration. I'm just been. In, I, I'm here for uh, brawns, not brains, today because I'm yes. the one that uh, was responsible for hitching the trailer up to the car and the car to the, or the AMI to the trailer. So if it does fall off, it's my fault. Eek. So what do you think of six months then with yeah. the AMI? I suppose my overall kind of headline 
would be that if I lived in a particular context, i.e. I lived in a large city that I never needed to go out of it, other than on very, very few occasions, where I would either take a train or hire a car, or my partner or friend had a car that I could borrow, maybe. If I just did local journeys in a big town, so say lived in central London or kind of suburban London, it would be absolutely perfect because whenever we use it, we feel this kind of warm glow of kind of, we're not hurting anybody by driving to Tesco. Because you do feel that kind of guilt, you know, it's a little bit drizzly uh, and you think, oh, I probably should cycle today, but actually it's a bit miserable, so let's take the car. But then I feel like, oh, I'm polluting everybody. There's none of that guilt with the Ami. You just get into yeah. it and be like, this is like a bike. This is as polluty as a bike. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of people will say, oh, but the electricity came from throwing polar bears into furnaces. <laughs> but like, yes, yeah, so does like, you know, your cooker and your washing machine yeah. and your tumble dryer. And no one sits around and goes, oh my God, you're killing penguins because you're tumble drying your underwear. Yeah. But this is an argument they say a lot about EVs. Yeah. That, um, a lot of it is just virtue signaling because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it does give you this kind of like sense of warm glowiness that you're saving the environment mm -hmm. by not putting pollution out yeah. there. Yeah, true. Localised pollution. True. There, yeah, that, and, and that's something that I think I, that bothers me actually, that it's the localised pollution thing. It's essentially yeah. the argument that middle class people in the developed world shouldn't breathe in smoke right next to where they are. Yeah. But somewhere in the world there will be. And that's totally fine because we don't know where it is. Yeah. Uh, so I, that does bother me a little bit. But anyway, this isn't about that. This isn't about EV evangelism. I, I don't really care, to be honest, what powers my car as long as it works yeah. in a way that suits my life. And the AMI could suit my life if I had the life that would suit it. Uh, I don't quite because I need to live. Cambridge is where I live and it's not quite big enough for me anyway to be the only place I need to exist in. Uh, I need to be able to get slightly further afield uh, and not and, and that's the problem with the AMI, is you can go, what is it, 40, uh, 70 kilometres, is it, range, yeah, something like 74. that? 74. 74 kilometres. 45 miles, I Yeah, think. 45, 50 miles you can do, which is not a bad distance, you know, it's a, it's a, you could do a decent run out to a little village or town well, for yeah, that. I took it to, the, the so the current Mr. McGill, um, my other half, long-suffering, You'll see him holding the camera a few times in the next few videos, probably. Um, we took it to Newmarket and back, which is 14 miles? Yeah, 14 miles from 14 Cambridge. Miles. And we worked out that we would probably have a, about 10 kilometres range left on it. And we actually had 11 we got back. Okay. But as we found last night, there's also turtle mode, uh, which a little turtle appears on the windscreen. And it's or on the dashboard, and there's a little bit of a grey area of why that comes on. It basically puts it into a reduced power mode. Some people find it does it when it's very, very cold. Other people find that when the battery gets very, very low. Um, unfortunately, all I could do was was it Partners in Crime and the Turtle Power song, and I cannot stop myself <laughs> doing it. It's like do 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 Turtle Power, do 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 Turtle Power. And the really annoying thing is, I don't know that song, and I grew up watching the cartoon Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, which I loved, but I've never seen the film. Because it was Ninja Turtles. It's Ninja Turtles it's in the film. Nin you drove it to Newmarket. Yes. That is 14 miles, you did manage it, and that was yes. okay, but what you didn't really explain and glossed over was the fact that in order to get between Cambridge and Newmarket, you've got to either go on the A14 dual carriageway, uh, or triple carriageway, which you didn't do, um, which it is technically allowed on. There's no reason why it's not allowed on it. Um, or you, ooh, we're passing a scrapyard, Jim's yep. getting excited. Oh, um, Mark 1 Range Rover. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, or you've got to go on a 50, 60 mile an hour big kind of wide, kind of na national speed limit road. And that's where the AMI becomes scary because in town, accelerating up to 28 miles an hour, it's really quick. You keep up with all the traffic. In fact, you beat most of the traffic uh, and you don't feel vulnerable. You think you're going to, before you drive it, you think you're going to feel vulnerable because it's so small. But actually, it's got really good guts and power. You don't feel that kind of vulnerability of a tiny little car. Um, but you do when you're doing 28 miles an hour on a large country road of 60 miles an hour with several cars behind you who can't overtake you because there's cars coming the other direction and that is the Achilles heel to me of the AMI if it did 40 miles per hour 
I think it would be forgive it would be forgiven for that because you would think people would just about cope with being behind you for three or four miles at 40 yep. miles an hour but at 28 you're oh, really at 100 oh yeah on a trailer yep saloon one face left cool but yeah 28 miles an hour that is really really slow and you really feel that kind of, you're really tiny and very vulnerable because you can't get out of any situation because you have reached the speed limiter and um, that's the bit that I think lets the Ami down. The rest of it, the fact that it's repaired down and it's got kind of fairly crappy welding and it's made of plastic and it's got uncomfortable seats, I totally forgive because it's wonderful. Yeah. It's got such charm and character. It's really utilitarian. Yeah. It's enjoyable around town. Everybody looks at it, points at it, laughs, smiles and goes, oh my God, what's that? We had several last night when yeah. we were driving. So, it is a real eye turner, head turner, sorry. Yeah. But I think unless you have that specific need for a car where you just don't need to go faster than 30 miles an hour, it really is difficult to justify as other than a toy. And you can see, I mean, I've been on holiday to France a couple of times earlier this year and some of the bigger towns had quite a few Amis in them and you can totally see in a big city, it just works. Yep. Uh, and particularly in France because it works for kids. Even, even in a big town. Yeah. You know, where every you know, because you're probably a good maybe fifteen or twenty miles from the next big town, so everything you do is within that one yeah. area. Yeah. Um, but what I was, what I was going to say was it's quite strange. Is the acceleration in town, as you said, is very very good. A couple of times I've kind of tried to show off a little bit and floored it, and then suddenly realised that I've had to actually back off because it is accelerating more quickly than the traffic around it. Uh -huh. um, which, so, I mean, you have no problem, but then you kind of go out past McDonald's and the airport in Cambridge, and then suddenly you go from this very small town road with terraced houses onto a sort of near motorway junction where it joins the A14. Pretty much. And suddenly this really nippy car, it's just, it's like it flicks the switch because all the rest of the traffic is starting to go really, really quickly. Yeah. And it, it just feels like you're dead in the water. And yeah. it's so strange because it felt so nippy a few seconds beforehand. And now it feels like it's such, such a liability. Yeah. And it's so, so strange that it happens so quickly just in a few hundred yards. Yeah. And I think the other, just talking about liability there, I think the other point where it feels a liability is today. Because we've had to, in order to move it from any yeah. location where it is comfortable in a big city, you have to hire a trailer like we've done today or a flatbed truck yep. like we've done on previous occasions and that it, so it means it's stranded yeah essentially without a big diesel truck to move it around because i mean you, you did when you picked it up in the netherlands you did travel quite a bit but that was a bit of a special occasion and you had to pre-plan a stop yes halfway through in order to charge it and that took like four hours in france you seemingly can't go up to charging stations and plug that in right whereas we couldn't do that in Amsterdam because um, it seemed to be uh, more the type 2 chargers were what we were looking at although I have seen a few plugged in but it's only the city center that has those okay um, so we actually had to go on Twitter yes my great love of Twitter and ask if someone was halfway between Hook of Holland and Amsterdam that we could nip to their house with an extension cable and thankfully someone actually paddied up Drew from TomTom Tom actually yeah. um, paddied up and said yes you can come and plug it into my house but as you say that meant because it's a three hour charge it was an entire day I think there's a lot of um, manufacturer resistance to making these things a little bit too practical for some reason. Mm. So going back to the Renault Twizy, which had no doors. At the time, Renault said that that was a requirement of it being a quadricycle. Now, obviously, now the Ami has been launched and has doors. That is obviously nonsense. Yeah. And that was a design decision made by Renault on the Twizy, which made it less practical for anybody outside the south of France or Spain. And the 28 mile an hour thing is a particular uh, requirement of the Vaudre Sans Permit class. I think it's of Voiture Sans Permis. He does the posh stuff. Um, yes, languages, over at Sean. Um, but Cars the, that you don't need a driving license to drive, basically, in France, in France. And legally, they're limited to 28 miles an hour. Yeah, which is why that is capped at 28 miles capped an hour. That but Renault did two versions of the Twizy. They did a lower powered version, which did the 28 miles an hour and allowed you to drive the car without a driver's license. Then they did the 50 mile an hour version, uh, which was the one they sold in the UK, 
and that was obviously much more usable. And Citroen again have made this decision to not do that, making its practical side much more diminished yeah. over what it could have been. Yeah. And again, I think it's very much, it's a decision they've made and they're just kind of sticking to their guns on it and they're using the legislation to say, no, we're yeah. not going to do that. Which is such a shame because in other markets where that requirement isn't there. Which is basically anywhere outside France. Anywhere outside France. It, it, there's no need for it to do that. I mean, they, they should really, if they're going, you know, to, they could they could match it to the speed limit in town in those places if they were there's no reason yeah. why it's it's 28 miles an hour because it's what 46 or 45 45. 45 kph is the is the legal limit in france but there's no reason why when they sell it in germany or the uk that they can't do 50 kph for germany which is yeah. the limit in town there oh, and mark 30 here well mark oh yeah two. mark one two yeah that's yeah. nice i think that is what's going to put people off yes and there's no need for it because it is a speed limiter that the car has. It's not that the motor runs out of juice after 28 miles an hour. No, it's if electronically you, if stopped. You search, uh, who do we say made the motors? Valeo? Uh, Valeo. Valeo. If you search uh, Valeo and Ami and Las Vegas, like that. Um, they took one of the ones to the technology show in Las Vegas last year, which had the speed limiter removed, and that one could do 56 miles an hour with no physical modifications to either the battery or the motor. No. Um, so that basically says that they have made a decision yeah. on this to do this in a certain way. And I suppose people are gonna say, oh, but they're French. You know, like French cars in the past would have had electric mirror switches in the boot. Or, you know, you kind of opened the glove box by climbing into the back seat and pulling a handle from underneath the seats. You know, but it's 2022, Citroen is part of Stellantis. They, they kind of need to maybe look at different markets here. Yeah, they, I think they should. I think they should because to success, that car, because it's so adorable, could easily succeed in the UK. Yes, because there is this thing now where they are actually doing away with most small cars. Like mm. we did a, a quick sort of head count the other night. You get the Volkswagen up, you get the Hyundai and the Kia, and you get the Fiat 500s and the Pandas, which are all the same car. And then after that, it really does phase yeah. out because all the little Peugeots, uh, Citroen, and uh, Toyotas have gone now. Mm. The Yaigo X is based on the Yaris. Yaris, so it's actually quite a big car, yeah. pretending to be a small car. Yeah. It's really just a decanted scented big car because okay. it pulled out all the hybrid stuff. From right. It. So and that, then, you know, talking about Vauxhall stuff, you've got the Corsa, which is for me is the size of an Astra. It's huge. Yeah. So yeah, it's it would not be the size car. of your Mark 1 Astra. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. And it's also £32,000 for an electric one. Yeah, no thanks. So that, that's the whole thing. There is this, this there is this category now for very cheap. I mean, you know, I know people say it's like eight thousand pounds is expensive for what you get, but considering like a Ford Fiesta is twenty grand. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not that. And you know, there's also Microline, the little. It's a Swiss company that builds the one in Ooh, yeah. Turin that looks like a um, like a bubble car from the fifties. You know, the one with the door opens at the front. Yeah. I was down at the Haynes Museum. They have one, and we got to try it there. Oh, okay. And it, um, I think, I think they, I mean, they, there's a really super basic one with tax credits in France. I think you get for like twelve thousand pounds, but the majority of those are like eighteen grand, so it's okay. ten grand more yeah. than what the Ami comes in. At. Yeah. Even though it does go for the higher yeah. top speed, I suppose the, the, the trouble is that you think eight thousand pounds is a lot of money. And it's not these it's days. It's not. No. It really isn't because you know I was looking at a second hand. 2014 Skoda Octavia, and that's eight grand. Yeah, it's nearly 10 years old. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I think the world has gone a bit skewed and we forget that it does, because we still think that 500 pounds buys you a reasonably okay car that you could live with for a year or so. Yeah, And that's, that's not the case. I think that's probably about it that we wanted to say about the Ami. Um, I think we, we re I'm gonna miss it. I really like it. Yeah, I mean, I, one, of, one of my favorite things was getting up in the morning, jumping into it, and going and getting fresh croissants. Um, yeah. That was, just felt so decadent. Like, you just jumped into it, turned the key, silently you would leave the driveway, turn into traffic. Obviously, you would get let out in traffic because it's, like, ridiculous looking. People yeah. are going, oh, look at, the, oh, look at him in his little car. Oh, yeah, you go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, and you pop down and you could squeeze into some motorcycle space at the co-op 
run in, grab a couple of croissants, come back, get the coffee on, and look out the window and feel very smug. Yeah, it's perfect for it because it's so manoeuvrable as well, which is something we haven't said earlier. It'll, like, it literally park anywhere and yeah. it'll get out of any spot. It'll do yeah. a twirl basically on its own space, pretty much. It's so small. It, it is great. It, and I can totally see if I was that. I don't know, if I was going. If I wasn't me, it would could work for me even in living in Cambridge because yeah. I've got used to a life which exists outside of the city but there are a lot of people who live there who have bike just bikes I guess yeah. and so this is a massive step up from yeah. a bike uh, where you're dry I think uh, also if you had an, an ice car as they like call it mm-hmm. internal combustion engine for those who are not sure what that is I had to look that up by the way um, for me it means in car entertainment by the way oh does it ICE Oh, which really okay. confused me for a long time when people started talking about it I was like what's that got to do with an electric car anyway um, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to reduce the amount that you were reliant on fossil fuel, you could buy this car. Because I mean, Citroen do a really good offer on it, where you put about fifteen hundred pounds down and you pay sixty pounds a month, which is like twenty, not even twenty pounds a week. Yeah, it's not a lot. You know, it's 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 basically a bus fare. You know, from mm. intercity bus fare a week to have this thing, and you could. Com- you know, completely reduce your reliance on fossil fuels yep. unless you absolutely needed it. Yeah. And and that would be something that I think it would be excellent at. Yeah, yeah, it really would. It really would. I, I've got nothing... I mean, I know we've nitpicked a little bit and there are some massive flaws, ultimately. But for what it is... Yes. Uh, I think it's just terrific. I love it. It's cute. It's adorable. Every time you drive it, you, it puts an enormous smile on your face. You feel really special. Uh, the car feels really special, even though it's incredibly basic. I don't know how they've managed to give it such charm and character, despite being made of like the same plastic as a Portaloo. Yeah, it, it it's kind of incredible. They've just given it a face that's just pretty and and quirky and attractive. I think that's one of the differences between a lot of Chinese designs and the established manufacturers of mm. Europe doing this sort of thing is that there just is much more experience working with those proportions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it doesn't, cause it's not, it doesn't look underweighted. No. Nope. Um, nope. It doesn't look ri- ridiculous, but at the same time does look ridiculous, but in a really cute way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I, I was, I mentioned earlier when we were in holiday in France and I was walking around and saw Nami an and I was like, Oh, Ami, Oh, Ami. And my other half said, you've got one on the driveway at home. <laughs> Why are you excited? I don't, I just am, because they're so cute and adorable. I just can't help but get excited about it. And I'm, I love old cars. New, new cars yeah. do not excite me, but that does. That thing yeah. really does. It's so cute and adorable. I totally get why it exists. And I really hope it's successful. Anyway. Let's, uh, let's call it a day. Uh, well, kind of. We still have a little bit of unloading. Oh, yeah. There'll be some footage with maybe some music of us unloading the car at some point, maybe. Sean may swear again because um, he got a little bit fed up last night in the dark trying to get the the, um, the trailer and the army turned. So there may be oh some God, more. Yeah. Oh, we're just stopping. We're slowing to 60. Mm, it shouldn't be looks too like bad. we're doing a lot less than 60 up there. Okay. Anyway, well, in which case, so we can concentrate on the uh, impending traffic jam ahead. Yes, and uh, chaos and stuff. Let's not that much chaos. Uh, let's bid you adieu. Or, uh, what is it? Au revoir, that's it. Au revoir, sorry, wrong language. And uh, we'll catch you again in the next video. Hopefully uh, you've managed to stay with us until the end. (laughs) There will be much editing. There will be much editing. All right, see you soon. Take care. Bye.